as a longtime Apple TV user, to get the most out of these devices, you really need to learn some of the tricks. For example, let's say you have a partner who doesn't pay attention when watching a show or is talking over it and ask you, what did he say? And you're thinking, well, if you're paying attention, you would know. But instead, you can call up Siri on the remote and say, what did he say? or she, or they. Then Siri will hop back 10 seconds. It turns on subtitles, replays that last 10 seconds, and then turns them off. It's such a great tip for hearing dialogue that you missed. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 more Apple TV tips. Make sure to stay the end. I'll also put a card that takes you to last year's tip videos for even more. Now this first tip is for one of my favorite features of the Apple TV. It is the up next section. I've covered the up next section in previous tip videos, but for the folks who aren't familiar, with it. Apple TV has this section here, the up next section, that keeps track of the shows you watch and new episodes as they become available. The problem with up next now is Apple added their, here is our crap bar up along the top here that just shows all of their shows and that bumped down the stuff I actually care about. So this next tip allows you to see the up next section minus all that stuff. So if you go to the home screen and what you'll do is you'll actually want to move the Apple TV app up to the top like I have it. Now to move an app, you would do a long press on it, it'll start to wiggle, and then you can move that app around wherever you need it. Once it's up there on the top, in that top row, it's going to show you a preview of the content. So with certain apps, like if I go over to Hulu, it's gonna show me some of the different Hulu shows. If you want to show the up next section like I have here, so you can just quickly see the shows you are watching, what you'll do is go into settings, apps, TV, top shelf, and then change it to up next. Once you do that, all your shows are up top, easy to get to, and you could avoid Apple stuff. Also, under the settings, you can go in there and turn off the sound, so when it starts auto-playing like this, you don't have to listen to it. If you'd like to add shows to the up next section, what you can do is you can just select the show and press play, and if it's supported in the up next section, it will show up there automatically. But now let's say you don't wanna start playing something and you just wanna have it there and it's recognized as new. What you can do is you can scroll down to a show. Let's say I find a show that I like. I can do a long press on it. This is gonna pop up that will say view details, or you can add it to the up next list. If I click add up next, it will just put it at the front of the list. Now, if you do a long press on a show, you'll see the view details. When you click on view details, that's going to give you a quick way to get to other episodes and additional information about the show. For this next one, I have a few remote tricks in here. Let's say, for example, you want to go back to the home screen quickly. Instead of just backing up through menus, you can hold down on that arrow button and it'll take you right to the home screen in your apps. Next remote tip is by default, if you press this little TV looking button, that's gonna take you back to your home screen in your apps. You can change that so when you press that button, it'll take you to the TV app and show you the up next section. Now to do that, you'll go into your settings, you'll select remotes and devices, then you'll select TV button. And when you do, it'll toggle between the TV app and the home screen. I like to use mine so it goes right to the TV app so I can see what I wanna watch next. Next, instead of using Apple's horrible on-screen keyboard, that's all letters in a row. Um, instead, use voice. Voice is great. You can use it to launch apps. You can use it to search for content. And you could use it to open content within apps. You can also combine the two and ask to open a particular show on an app. For example, I can say, play Next Level Chef on Hulu. Just popped into my head. It's what my wife and I are watching. And here we go, launched right into the show we're looking for. So take advantage of voice when you can. Another typing tip is using your phone to type on the Apple TV. Let's say you wanna do a search for something. I don't know why Apple tortures us with this bad keyboard design that you literally, you have to like tuk, 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 tuk. If you're under your profile and you go to type something in, you'll see on your Apple devices, such as your iPad and your phone, the keyboard will pop up. And now. I can type what I want. So I want more Tom Cruise because Top Gun wasn't enough. And now we got more Cruise, folks. If you do take advantage of the keyboard when it's on here, if it's something that requires a password and you have that password saved on your phone, you can select it and it'll do an autofill. So convenient. Now this next tip is a 
great addition to Siri that came out with iOS 16.2. It's the ability to have your voice recognized by Siri. If I say something like, play some music, it's gonna know to grab information from my Apple Music. So it's, uh, just confirm it, open Apple Music. And for some reason, uh, I think I wanna listen to Frozen. Okay. I'm blaming the Echoes for this, people. You want to know why? Because when my family listens to music on the Echoes, anytime they ask for something, it goes to my Apple Music, okay? So that's not my Frozen there. <laughs> of course, the one damn song that pops up. It's not even a good song. Get this right outtake. But some other stuff. I want to watch an action show. Let's see what it shows me now. And there, it gave me suggestions of some stuff I might want to actually see, like The Last of Us, which is a great show. Next is using AirPlay to play music, audio, or videos from your Apple devices. Now to use it, I can have something like a YouTube video playing. I can swipe down from the top, hit the little AirPlay button, find the device that I want to uh, cast to. So for example, I'm gonna select the Office TV. Here is the video that I was playing. Pretty close to the same. And I can control it right from my control panel. I can even bring up the remote and control the actual Apple TV through the remote app. Now, if you want to cast something from your computer, you would go up to the control panel and there you could click on the AirPlay icon and select what you want to AirPlay to from the computer. You can also do screen sharing. When it comes to an iPhone or an iPad, it'll just share what's on the screen. But when it comes to a computer, you can also use it as a separate display. This next tip also uses the control center. What you can do is swipe down from the top and you will see there's a remote app in there, which is super convenient if you lose the remote or you just wanna mess with somebody in the family. Open that app and then you'll select the Apple TV that you wanna control. So I have the Office TV selected. There's now the little home button on there. You also have the button to back up. I have power controls, channel up, channel down. It is also really convenient that on the Apple Watch, there is a little remote app. You open it up and when you have it open, you can pick the Apple TV you have in your house. So I can pick this one in here and you're gonna get a lot more limited functionality. You do have arrows in your select button so you could navigate around and then click in the middle to select something. Now, another tip that I've included in other videos because I think it offers a lot of value is taking advantage of spatial audio. Now, if you didn't know, you can pair a set of AirPods second generation, AirPod Pros first and second generation, or AirPods Max, and there's some Beats models that this will work too. With the spatial audio, it is a virtual surround sound. What's cool is if you take a set of AirPods, you put them in your ears, you'll actually get a little pop-up on the screen that will allow you to connect quickly. Spatial audio uses head tracking between the AirPods and the Apple TV to determine distance so that the voice locks to the screen and take advantage of the head tracking so when you turn your head the sound still comes from the screen or comes from behind you and really gives an immersive experience. Now what's crazy is a recent addition allows the Apple TV to use personalized spatial audio. And if you're not familiar with that, what you do is go into the AirPod settings under Bluetooth, and you will actually set up spatial audio uh, using the phone's camera to take pictures of your ears along with a sound test to determine the best sound for you out of the AirPods. And listening to the TV with AirPods is not like listening to the TV with other Bluetooth headphones. Spatial audio puts the sound where it should be. With this next tip, you don't need to buy a new karaoke machine. I know you were out there shopping for one, but instead you can take advantage of the Apple TV. Uh, Apple now allows Apple Music users to see beat by beat lyrics so you can sing along with it. If you have one of the third gen 4K Apple TVs, you can actually turn down the lyrics to the song so you can take the lead. That's right. I think this is a lot of fun. I haven't played with this yet and I probably shouldn't, but 
It sounds like fun. This next tip I have covered before in other videos, but I think it offers a lot of value. It's being able to uh, see some of your smart home devices right from the Apple TV control panel. What you do is a long press on the TV button, and that's gonna bring up a side panel over here. If you scroll down, you can actually select the little home icon, and that starts to bring up your cameras and your favorite scenes. So if you wanna trigger a scene quickly, it's easy to do. When it comes to selecting individual devices, you don't have control from the control panel, but if you do have cameras paired up in the same room with devices, for example, I have one that's in my living room, I can click on that camera and then it's going to give me the option to see other accessories in the room with that camera. Fortunately, that's the only way to get to individual accessories, but I like having the option there. These tips were just the tip of the Apple TV tip iceberg. I wanna see how many times I could say tip in the same thing. So anyways, now you need to continue your education with this video over here that's gonna share 10 more tips with you. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.